Hi, it's Chrissy from Chrissy's Corner for Collectors and I have a cooking video for you. This is Kitchen Essentials. So um, you guys have seen me make a lot of stuff from scratch, but I want you to know that it's okay. You don't always have to have stuff from scratch. If you can make your life easier and you can cook a good meal for your family at home, that's all that's important. So I'm gonna to talk to you about chicken marsal, marsala. My friend Julie and I, um, we do these cooking days sometimes. We'll come up with three recipes. We buy all the ingredients, we split the cost, and then we cook them and then we package them and freeze them. And we love to make chicken marsal. So I was thinking about having that and I went to the store and I saw this. This is a store brand chicken savory marsala. So I thought, I'm gonna try it, see what happens. So all I had to do was go out and buy the chicken and some mushrooms, which I did. Where are my mushrooms? Oh, they're probably still in the other bag. Um, and then this sauce. So what I'm gonna do is get the crock pot going. The crock pot is over there. And basically this just says um, you'll need pasta. I'm doing mashed potatoes, the chicken, vegetable oil, mushrooms, and the sauce. Um, it says you can saute your mushrooms ahead of time, which I am gonna do with some onion. And then um, I'm gonna put this in the crock pot to get it start to get warmed up. So I'll do that off camera. You don't need to see that part. Then what I got was some green beans and I'm gonna steam these and then I'm just gonna lightly um, do them in the skillet with some butter and garlic and salt and pepper. That's all I'm gonna do. And I've got potatoes that I've already peeled, cut, and they're getting ready to get uh, boiled for mashed potatoes. So that's what this is gonna be about. And I just wanted to let you know that it's okay, that you don't have to make everything from scratch and to let you know how this turns out because I've never had this before. So the thing that's bothering me about it, to me anyway, chicken marsala for me, when we make it together with jewels, um, is we put a little heavy cream in it. So this kind of looks a little orangey to me. So I don't know, that's my only concern. But let me get started. Okay, so I've got my mushrooms clean. I've got my cast iron skillet, which I love my cast iron skillet. So you'll see me do a lot of cooking in there. I really do like it. But um, I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. Okay. And I put some uh, extra virgin olive oil and then I put some butter in there. So I'm gonna get my cleaned mushrooms, throw them in there. My chopped onion. Now, if you've not watched some of my other videos, I buy this packing paper from my eBay store, but I also like to use it when cooking because it's easy to clean up. And it's biodegradable. Okay, so this is gonna start simmering down. And the only other thing I'm gonna to add to this is some Italian herbs and salt and pepper. And that's really all I'm gonna to add to that. While I'm cooking this dinner for us, I want you to know that there's a pot back here that's got 12 hard boiled eggs boiling. So I make that on the weekend for Billy's salads for during the week and for my salads during the week. So you can get a lot done when you're in the kitchen. I also want you to know that I tasted that Marsala and it has the, the telltale Marsala taste to it. Um, but I do think it's gonna to need to be cut with a little bit of cream. I wish I had bought cream. I didn't buy cream because I didn't really notice the color of it, but I can just use milk and that'll be good too. So this is gonna cook down. My potatoes are cooking over here. And then I'm gonna get ready to get the chicken prepared. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. I'm gonna move your camera back just a little bit. So my paper that I use, great way to protect my cutting board, but it's also a good way to um, clean that too. So I bought a big package of chicken. We're not gonna use all this chicken. The rest I'm gonna freeze. But, um, and wow, the price of chicken is ridiculous. So if it's just for me and Billy, so I'm gonna make like four cutlets, I believe. Yeah. So I'm gonna get two huge breasts out. 
and I'm gonna kind of open them up a little bit. And I want them to be the same kind of size, so I'm gonna cut it this way. For the cutlet, so that's one. And then I'm gonna cut it kind of this way. Let's see, what's the best way to do this? I think this way. That's two. And then this one, I think that's good that way. I'm gonna take off a little bit of this fat though we don't need all that. Get rid of that. Give my mushrooms a little stir. So when you're cooking your mushrooms, you know, they get a little watery at first, but then they'll cook down. So you just want to let them, and again, my uh, cast iron pot. Now that sauce that's in the pre-package did have some um, mushrooms already in it, but I like my Marsala with mushrooms. <laughs> Real life mushrooms. So I'm gonna cut this away this way. And this is a big one, man. I'm gonna cut it this way. And then I'm gonna cut, look how thick that is. <laughs> that's a huge chicken breast. I'm gonna cut that down a little bit because that's just too big. Okay, now, here's where the paper comes in really well. So, let me show you. So I've got two pieces of paper here. And I'm gonna take my one filet. And let me grab a dish. Okay. So, paper plate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my mallet and I'm gonna pound this down a little bit. I want it to all be flat, one size. So it's kind of a little bit more uniform. There's one. Now this one looked like it was okay. So I think it doesn't need a lot of pounding. We'll give it a little, we'll give it a little aggression pounding. Get out all those frustrations from work this week. Now this, it's got a little too much fat on it. So I'm gonna cut some of that fat off. We don't need all that. Off you go. Take my paper up, cover it, and that's so much fun. Now one of these was already, this one was pretty good shape, and this one was pretty good shape, so I don't need to do anything, but these two are still a little fat. So from two breasts, I got four, six pieces. So that's pretty good. Yep. Okay. Nice little, they're not huge cutlets. Um, now what I'm gonna do is clean up this a little bit, put down my mushrooms and prepare to cook up my cutlets and I'll come back to you guys with that. I don't have that, the taste of the sauce is really has a good flavor to it. So I really don't have to add anything else to it. The only thing, like I said, is I'm gonna probably add some cream to it um, just because I, I just think it needs to be mellowed out a little, if that makes sense. But before I do that, let me show you what else I'm gonna do. So I've got two chicken breasts left over. And I've got a bag here. So I'm just gonna mark this two chicken breasts. I can never get this marker open. It's the stupidest marker. Two chicky breasts. So I like these bags. I think Billy bought these. I don't know if he bought them by accident, but I really like them because they, they fold up like that. So they work good when you're doing 
So one chicken breast, two full chicken breasts. Well, this is another meal. So this was $15. So we took half out. So that's $7 already. And then I've got another meal that's another $7. So, you know, you don't need that much protein if you have a lot of vegetables going in there. So um, you can help save money that way. And I always keep washing my hands when I'm working with poultry. Okay, so let me get, let this cook down, clean up this area a little bit, and get ready for stage two. I probably believe my eggs are going to be done here in a second. So far, so good. Okay, the mushrooms are done. At the very end, I added a little bit of bacon grease to that. And there's still some grease in here. I'm going to use this still to cook the chicken. So again, we don't have to clean another pot. This is gonna go in the crock pot with the sauce and that's gonna cook down still some more while I get this going. I had a package of green beans and I broke that package in half. I have half I'm steaming in the microwave and then I'm gonna saute them with a little garlic and butter. And then these I'm putting up for in the refrigerator for tomorrow and I'll show you what we're gonna do with those. Okay. We're ready for the chicken. So it's a three part method. Some people don't do it this way. This is just the way I've always done it. So the first thing I do is I've had some oil heating up. It's probably hot enough, but um, we'll just check in a second. So I'm gonna, you see I have the, bake, the paper down on the bottom. So I'm not dirty in a plate. And I'm gonna dredge my chicken in flour. Okay. And then I'm gonna dip it in the egg wash. I don't usually use both hands, but I just, it's just easier to show it to you this way. And then in the breadcrumbs. And by the way, these breadcrumbs are homemade breadcrumbs. Whenever my bread gets a little too hard, I crumple it up and add seasonings. So that's gonna go in there. Get another one ready. And I want to show you something else. I have two other pieces of paper ready to go over here to put my chicken on and um, so that the grease can get out of it. I can't talk today. I don't know why. Okay. Dredge it in breadcrumbs. I do like to use the breadcrumbs that have the Italian seasoning in it for this. Sometimes I use plain, but for this, I really wanted the Italian flavor in there with the Marcella. I think it would be really good. And I can usually get three pieces in this skillet, so let's see. Dredging it in the egg. And my wash is just egg and water. You can use milk if you want, but I don't really need to. The water is just, it's just a binder. So it's not that it's giving it any extra flavor, really. Okay, so that's going down in there. Let me wash my hands off. Meanwhile, I took the eggs off the stove, and I am, um, have cold water I ran over them, so I can peel them later on for this week. Put them in a container, and we'll have them for the week. So I have a fork somewhere right here. I'm just gonna check the chicken. So the first piece I put in, it's a nice little brown on it. I'm gonna turn it over. So why is this oil like this? Um, I put some coconut oil in it because I didn't want to use it all of my extra virgin olive oil. It was a little, the, it doesn't have a coconut flavor to it. It's just a dense oil. I probably have it a little too high too, so I'll turn it down. So that piece is cooking through. I've got the marsala going. The green beans will be the last part of this and then mashing up the potatoes, which still need some time. So they're going. I can get my next piece of chicken into the flour. So I try to have one clean hand, one dirty hand. Put it in the flour, let it sit there. I'm gonna turn over the second piece of chicken. I'm gonna 
this third piece needs a little bit longer. Now, as I take them out, I will put them on this brown paper to get all the oil and grease off of them. And I think this one is probably a little bit longer. And then I will throw them into the oven on um, my other cast iron skillet. And uh, I'll turn the oven on. And I'll put it on like 250. I don't want it to dry out, but um, I want it to, you know, still kind of cook a little bit if they need it. So that one's gonna come out. Let it drain as much as I can. Right onto the, pa the paper. This one is probably ready to be turned over. And now we can get our next piece of chicken going. So it really doesn't take very long as long as you get everything ready ahead of time. But this is really a quick meal. Could I have bought the chicken already breaded and um, cooked? Yeah, I could. If you want to save it even more time, you could do that. Or if you have, like, if I had time today, I could have taken all the chicken and cooked it all up and then refroze it. So then um, the next time I have a meal, it'll be pretty much all ready to go, you know? Just think about that, you know, when you're cooking and you're getting stuff ready for your week, for your kids, whatever you're planning on doing, well, how can I make this easier for an easy meal? It's also really helpful to have a meal plan and what you have in your freezer. So for instance, I know I have some um, ground sausage that I haven't used. Uh, turkey sausage, and so I'm going to kind of think of something that I can do with that. Scoop all my breadcrumbs back to the middle. Get my next piece of chicken going. So when we're ready to serve this, ooh, slippery little devil. When I'm ready to serve this, it will be a scoop of potatoes, some of the green beans, a piece of chicken on top, and then the Marcel sauce I'll spoon over the top. Very simple. And I've only got three, two, two more cutlets, so then I'm almost done. If you can see, I'm using paper plates because when I'm all done, this is just going to get rolled up, thrown on a paper plate, and throw it in the garbage. It's biodegradable and easy for you. Okay. I can get another piece of chicken in there. Try to get all done at one time and be done with it. There we go. And I had just enough breadcrumbs, just enough. Perfect. I don't have to waste any. Okay, and get my last piece of chicken going. This paper we got at um, Home Depot. So we use it for our eBay to wrap things in, but I also like to use it with my herb drying, which you saw in some of the videos. And when I'm cooking, it just makes things so much easier for cleanup. Really it does. This is my last piece of chicken. I'm getting it ready to go in here. This one can get flipped. Got a nice brown to it. Push that one over, and that one over. And then I'll show you how easy it is to clean this up. Now this chicken that's been that's been cooked. Um, um, just, you can see how it's draining. I don't know if you can see from there, but there's grease on there. So again, that just this helps with cleanup. This is done. The egg wash is done, so we can get rid of that. And flip this piece over. And this piece is not quite ready yet. 
So one clean hand, one dirty hand. So I'm gonna go wash my hands. You can watch this boil. Take this piece out. That looks like it's pretty good. Throw my last piece of chicken in there and show you my cleanup. And this one can probably get no, not yet. Okay, so cleanup. Very simple. So I got my paper plate, right? I'm gonna move that to the side. I've got my flour. I'm gonna roll it into the paper. Roll it up. Done. I'll just hold that down. Um, a really good way to clean your your butcher block if you have a lemon. The acid in it helps to um, clean it and disinfect it and also gives it a good, you know, makes it smell nice. So I just take a lemon and I rub it. I do this for the big one too. And I squeeze it. Then I get some salt, any kind of salt, but we're bougie. So we have pink Himalayan salt, why not? And scrub that in there. Clean paper towels, and my board's clean. And not to rub it in or anything like that, but since we do live in Arizona, we have our own lemon tree. So we've got free cleanser. <laughs> all the time. All right, let's turn this one piece of chicken. Get it ready. This one, probably ready. Okay, so that's that. The chicken's done. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with the beans real quick, and then probably it'd be time to mash the potatoes. I'm not gonna show you how to mash potatoes. I think you probably know how to do that, but, um, but I will show you what I'm gonna do with the beans. So let me get this set. Oh. Okay, the chicken's been covered and put in the oven to warm, stay warm and cook down a little bit. I've got my little saute pan, little bit of butter, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in there. And I pre-steamed my green beans in the bag and they're a beautiful color. They're already cooked. So we're just gonna give them some flavor. And remember the half a lemon that I cleaned the butcher block with? Here's the other half. So we're gonna put some lemon juice on top of that in a second. Now, I did take some onions, just a tiny bit. I'm gonna saute them a little bit. Get them going. Taking my green beans, putting them in there. Oh, they look good. So remember, I got a whole bag. It's just me and Billy, so we're just using half a bag. And while that's getting the butter incorporated, I'm gonna put some pepper, pepper. You could put some red chili flakes if you wanted in here, but I don't really, I don't want anything spicy tonight. Now, I have some garlic in a jar that's pureed, and I don't want chunky garlic in this tonight. So I'm gonna use this pureed garlic. Throw that in there, and we're just gonna toss this around a little bit. Oh, it smells good. Very, very simple. But I do want that garlic to get on all of them, so I really wanna toss it around a little bit.
Oh, it smells good. Okay, let that go. And now I'm gonna take my lemon juice and just put some lemon juice over top. Just like that. Now my beans are breaking up a little bit, so I probably over steamed them, which is fine, but I was hoping not to do that, but okay, the beans look good. All right, let me get the potatoes done, and then we're ready to prepare our dish. Okay, here they are. I've got the green beans with the garlic, the mashed potatoes. You guys know how to make mashed potatoes. A piece of chicken. And now we're gonna put the gravy on it and see how it came out. So I did put a little bit of milk in here just to make it a little creamier. It's cooked down really well. It looks delicious. And this is gonna be really messy. So I'm gonna put it over the potatoes and the chicken. And I don't put a lot, um, because he can always go back and put more on if he wants. Now we're not quite done. So we're gonna have our dinner and then I'm gonna show you what we're making for dessert. All right, so that was dinner, it was really good. I'm glad I did put the milk in it though because it did, it was a little bitter and so the milk kinda took that away. So I'm gonna make a cobbler, okay? And let me tell you, this is a special cobbler for me because one of the first things that when we first came to see this house, was that we have mulberry trees on the side of the house. And our realtor said, oh, there's a mulberry trees. They give you great berries and everything. I had never had a mulberry in my life. So when they finally came into season, I spilled stuff on my shirt, I'm sorry. But when they finally came into season and I tasted them, they were kind of in the middle of a blueberry and a blackberry, but they were very good. But they're not very big. Now, last year we had a really good crop and you can only pick a couple a day, you know, because they don't all turn at the same time. So I would pick them and put them in at wash them and then put them in a bag in the freezer until I was ready to use them. But then what happened was when I went to use them, what I hadn't done was cut the tiny little green stem off. So I had to go through like 3000 of them. My fingers were purple, it was horrible. So I learned from that. And so when I picked them this year, I brought them in, washed them, and I took the stems off right away before I put them in the freezer. So they're ready to go, which I'm thrilled about. Here's the problem. We started feeding the birds. So last year, I had a full bag of these. This is all I got this year. And I had to share them with the birds. So, okay, I can deal with that. I'm gonna show you how I make my cobbler. Okay. So I'm gonna start here by showing you my lager burger casserole dish that I love. So because I don't have as many mulberries as I would have liked, I did have to supplement and got some blackberries, frozen blackberries. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I have a little bit of butter melted and I'm gonna add that into this pan. And I'm gonna get my little black, a wooden spoon and kind of just move that around a little bit. And that's just gonna help keep it from sticking to the bottom. Okay, hold that one. Okay, so the, I had to turn the oven on, I forgot to <laughs> turn the oven on. Okay, so I'm gonna take my blackberries. They've been sitting out a little bit, so they're a little watery, which is fine. I'm gonna put them in first. Now, I don't like cobbler to be super, super sweet. So I am gonna add some sugar, but I'm not gonna add a lot of sugar. Look at those big mulberries, wow. Okay, and they're already getting coated. You see how they got white? Because they're cold and they hit the hot butter and they kind of stuck to them, which is good. Now I'm gonna take my mulberries that have been cleaned and de-stemmed and throw them on top. Oh, I missed one. See these little green stems? Okay, well, I missed one or two. All right, now, they're all going in the bottom. 
and I'm gonna take this cake mix. So I got a butter cake mix. You can make cobbler any way you would like. You can make it from scratch. But again, it doesn't always have to be everything from scratch. So I'm going to take a little bit of the cobbler of the, the um, <gasps> cake mix and sprinkle it over the, okay? And move them around a little. Move them around a little, just like that, just like that. And kind of coat them a little bit. Okay. Now I have some sugar. You can add as much as you like. I've got about three-fourths of a cup, but I'm probably not going to add it all in. And I'm going to give that a little stir. because I'm gonna add some honey to it. So I'm gonna sweeten it naturally with some honey. So I'm just gonna take a spoonful and kind of drizzle it over everything, just like that. That looks good. That's about a tablespoon, I guess. Now what I'm gonna do, I just ate that honey. So the cake mix calls for three eggs and a cup of water. I have the three eggs, let me move this to the side. I have the three eggs. Oops, little eggshell in there, hold on. Okay. Remember I sprinkled some of the cake mix, so I'm gonna put the rest of the cake mix in. And then it calls for some butter. I'm gonna put some butter, most of the butter in there, but I'm gonna keep a little bit. And then it calls for some water. And it calls for um, a cup of water, but I want it to be a cobbler, so I really don't want it to be a cake, if that makes sense to anybody. So what I'm gonna do is start incorporating the eggs and the cake mix and slowly add some water, little at a time. Because I don't want it to be cakey. I want it to be more of a, a crunchy cobbler, if that makes sense. I'm still using the amount of ingredients they're telling me to, but it's gonna be a little thicker than a cake mix. So I kinda like that consistency. That works good for me. Now, the rest of the butter that I had, I'm gonna drizzle that over, again, the berries, like that. And now, we are going to switch. We're going to drape, a uh, drop this cake mixture onto the berries. Now, as the berries cook, hold on, I'm gonna switch hands here. As the berries cook, the water from the berries are gonna come up into the cake mixture, so that's why I didn't wanna add a whole bunch of cake mixture. So I'm gonna take little dollops, like that, of the cake mixture, and put it all over the top. And as it cooks, it's going to go down into the berries, too. So I'm going to actually push it down into the berries just a little bit. So when I talk to you about kitchen essentials, it's always good to have a box of cake mix on hand for quickie desserts last minute taken to somebody's house. And this is gonna work out really well. So. Pushing it in there. 
Now, if you wanted to, you could um, put some cinnamon over top. I'm not gonna do that. I don't think it needs it. I really want it to be, I want the taste of the mulberries to really come through. Wherever I see I'm missing some, I'm gonna add it. So I have the oven on 350. This is gonna go in the oven for about 35 minutes until the cake is kind of cooked. Um, the berries are gonna bubble up. So some of the cake is gonna go down inside um, and the bubble, the things are gonna come up and then this can be served like a cobbler with some ice cream. So let me get it in the oven and I'll come back and show you how it comes out. There it is. It's still pretty hot. I just took it out of the oven. Um, it's still a little cake-like on top, but it's okay. I am gonna scoop out a little piece so you can see what it looks like. And um, before I served it though, I'd probably let it cool a little bit longer. But I wanna get this video over with because I'm done for the day. So I'm just gonna take a little corner piece. I'm gonna turn it upside down so you can see. So you've got the cake like right here and the berries have all gotten mushy. And then if I served ice cream on top of that, like that, still warm, be really good. So let's try it. Hold on. And again, it's hot, so. I'm just gonna take a little bite. Oh God, yeah. So, okay, the blueberries, um, not the blueberries, the mulberries are, is the predominant flavor and that's what I really wanted. The cake soaked up a lot of juice, so it's very flavorful. But the berries, you can still see they have some form to them, so they're not all mushy. Mm-hmm, very good. Paired it with ice cream, but. So, mulberry cobbler. We get one of these a year. And there it is. I can divvy this up and freeze it so we can take it, you know, for lunches and stuff. But, and the blackberries worked really good with the mulberries. I think strawberries or blueberries would have overpowered. This didn't. Really good. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. It's Saturday night. We ate dinner. We had cobbler. It's time for pajamas and just chill. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Don't forget to come and see us on Sunday morning for the early bird show. It's 8 o'clock um, my time, which is Mountain Standard Time, I believe. I don't know. If you're subscribed and you hit the notifications, you'll get notified. But tomorrow morning, it's going to be with Young Star Girl and our friend Wendy is joining us too. So I hope you can come visit with us. Bye, guys.